so today's video is another book decluttering and I'm starting this video stood up and now I'm thinking maybe I should do more videos stood up what do you think I quite like this little backdrop you can see more of the books we shall think about that anyway yes today's video is a book declutter I did one towards the start of the year and I just need to do another one I have I don't know if you can see up there they are nearly reaching the ceiling and I have a lot of books that I need to read so we need to sort this out um yes some of the books I have been sort of decluttering as and when throughout the year um but I've not done a big purge like this. Um, I do still have a stack of books left over from last time, um, which I'll show you in a second. So these are the books I still have left over from last time. As you can see, the pile is smaller, but we still have quite a few in here. And those books, um, I've slowly been putting and like, advertising on Facebook book reselling pages um, just so I can get just a little bit of money back from them um, especially some of the signed books so um, they will be going up on there and yes so any books that I take away today will also be going on to a Facebook post so I can try and resell them um, and get a little bit of money back um, and then if not I will take some just to the charity shop so without further ado I think I will inch like just do a full pan over my bookshelf area show you what I'm working with and then we will get into sorting them out So this is my bookshelf area. So it goes books, 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 knitting. So you can't even see the bottom of the bookshelf and behind there is where I keep my um, books that I've still got to read. I've got some sort of coffee table books and then there was some sort of organization and now it's just been sort of piling on top. So I wanna sort these out um, and just see what I want to keep. So I know this is going to be difficult because I love having a like a big library of books um, but two things I really want to think about whilst I'm doing this. If we were to move again in the near future would I want to have the struggle of boxing them all up and taking them with me. When I moved from my parents house into this house, um, let me start again. So as I'm going through these shelves, I'm gonna be asking myself sort of two main questions. The first one being, if we were to move again, would that book be one that I'd want to take with me? Obviously there's so much that you take with you when you move and when I moved out of my parents' house into this house, I realized that I needed like two big boxes just for my books and that was crazy. Do I want to do that again? not particularly if I can help it so I really want to think about that aspect and the actual physical side of the books and then also am I going to read those books again I may have really liked them the first time round will I read them again there's quite a few books on here that I read maybe sort of mid late teen years like the Hunger Games books like that and that those sort of series um, that I was really into at the time and really really enjoyed but am I going to read them again Saying that, uh, that sort of happened the other day. I wanted to pick up the City of Bones series to see if I wanted to reread the first three and then pick up the final two books. And I started the first book, and even though I liked the series when I read it the first time, I think it was I sort of knew what was going to happen. It didn't have the same effect on me, and I just wasn't really in the right frame of mind to read that book series again. So I got rid of those three books. So that's another thing I want to go through, especially with series and books that I read uh, a couple years ago or more. So that is that. And uh, I'm going to put something on my phone to watch. And um, I think firstly, I'm just going to take all the books off my shelf and put them on my couch and um, assess it like that and take all the little knickknacks off and just give it all a nice clean as well while we're at it. So let's get started. Everything off the book 
bookshelf. This is what we are left with and the coffee books are on the floor. Um, this looks as big a pile as it was the last time I did this, which is scary, so yes, I think I'm going to go through and try and talk to you my reasons of keeping things and not keeping things, but right now I need to open a window, so I'm not quite sure how the sound's going to be, because it's quite noisy out there, so hopefully it won't be too bad, but I'm boiling in here, so um, I'm going to have a little break. Maybe get myself a cold drink and then uh, we'll start going through the books. So I just wanted to give you another look at all of my books all laid out here. Like how crazy is that? It's hard because with, let's try and put you up on a book. Stay. It's hard because with like, when you get all your clothes out, you're like, no one needs that many clothes. When you get all your books out, I feel like, for me, books were always something that were encouraged. My parents were always encouraging me to read. They didn't really begrudge buying me books in quantity. Um, and so it's hard to sort of look at all these books and think not one person needs all those books. Um, but for me, again, if we move, I don't want to have to carry all these books. I want the books that I can just keep with me and that I know are going to stay with me for a while. So, that being said, um, I'm putting this off slightly, so let's just crack on with it. I'm watching a bit of Kipling on QVC while we're doing it, and also I want to show you, this is the book that I'm reading at the moment. If you saw my husband buys my books, uh, video then this was one of the ones that he picked out and it's Easy Way Out by Stephen Amsterdam and I'm about 50 pages in, well not even that, 30 pages in um, and enjoying it so far so I'm going to keep that one obviously to the side. Um, I've kept all the books that I've still got to read at the bottom underneath because obviously I don't need to go through those because I want to read them. Um, so yeah I think I'm going to try and go through these on my own and then if I get a particular hard book that I come across or anything I will um, go through it with you and reach out for help. So I actually just went and sat down for about an hour um, I was starting to feel really tired um, I was up at like a reasonable time this morning I think I've just done so much um, I might do a video on this but lately I have been feeling just really really tired um i'm not quite sure why um yeah so like yesterday i ended up having a three hour nap when i got home um and then was like really productive up until like midnight um so yeah i just needed a bit of a, a sit down i went and made myself a mocha and i'm ready to tackle this now uh so yeah grab a drink grab a snack and let's start doing this So I'm going to get my Goodreads page up as well, so if I've sort of forgotten the baseline of a book, I can go back to it and uh, see what the plotline was and ratings I gave it. Really I don't want to be keeping anything that was like three stars or less, to be honest, um, if I'm really brutal with myself. But we shall see. So the first book is One by Sarah Crossan and I give this book five stars. This is about conjoined twins and I really liked it. It's um, a different subject to normal and it's written in a really interesting way as well. So I will keep that one because I think that would be a cool one to reread and then probably after that I will pass it on. The next one is The Memory Book by Rowan Coleman. Um, I remember this being sort of about like dementia and memory. Let's see what I gave it because on the surface I'm not that fussed about keeping it. So I rated this book 5 out of 5 stars but it doesn't really stick out too much to me in my mind. Um, I remember it being about a mother that has dementia or the start of Alzheimer's and um, sort of creating this book um, for her. So I'm going to put this on the maybe one. The next one is Endurance by Scott Kelly. Obviously I am keeping this. Um, I know my other astronaut books are in there somewhere, so I'm keeping that. The next one is Louis Theroux, The Call of Weird. Now, as much as I love Louis Theroux, this book was a, 
a little bit underwhelming for me. Um, it's to do with um, the weird weekend documentaries that I did and um, you can find them on Netflix and things like that. But I think I am going to pass this one on. Um, I don't think I would reread that again. So let's make another pile over there. This one is Artemis by Andy Weir. Um, I remember liking this more than I liked um, his other book, which was The Martian. So I've read this one quite recently and I did give it four out of five stars. Um, so I must have quite enjoyed it, but just can't quite remember the ending. I think I'll keep it because I did rate it so highly. Um, and so that will be one to reread at some point. My memory, as you can tell, is very poor when it comes to books. Right, next one. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I really enjoyed this. Will I reread it again? I'm not sure. It's about a 16 year old girl and I'm starting to sort of move away from teenage um, perspective of books. Um, you know, as I grow older, I'm 22 now which is crazy to think. Um, this does um, talk about OCD and um, sort of anxiety and that sort of thing, but I think I'm gonna pass this book on now. The next book is The Cellar by Natasha Preston. This is a pretty dark book about a girl that gets kidnapped and um, held prisoner with these other girls in a cellar. Um, and it's quite it's quite warped you see a point of view from his the capturer's point of view and i quite enjoyed this from what i remember so i'm going to keep that one we then have the orphan's tale by pam jenoff if i believe rightly this is sort of two stories coming together um one about a jewish girl trying to be hidden and one about a german circus i'm going to put that in a maybe pile The Help by Catherine Stockett. I've not read this for a very long time and I'd like to read it again. Like I've not read this book in years um, and I know I liked it and uh, I would definitely want to reread that at some point. We then have Satellite by Nick Lake. Again, another spacey book and I've really enjoyed this one so I'm going to keep that. We have Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This is quite a sad book. Um, if you've read it um it's about a paraplegic um and she goes and looks after him it's it's now a film i don't know if i would read it again because i know the plot line pretty well i've seen the film um i'm not sure on that one so again a maybe um because obviously i know how it ends and um i don't know if i'll want to reread that in the future so this one is Room by Emma Donoghue. I really enjoyed this book. It's quite similar to The Cellar, um, but this one is about a mother and a son who is kept hostage in um, a basement. So I'm going to keep that one. Another sort of spacey moon themed one is 172 Hours on the Moon. I've not read this one for a while now, but again, I enjoyed this book, I remember, and I remember it having sort of a, a darkish twist towards the end. So I'm going to keep that one. I have a lot of space themed books. This next one is Faceless by Alyssa Schinmel. Um, I am gonna keep this one. This is about a girl who has an accident and um, she ends up getting a face transplant and I remember it being quite emotional, quite sort of inspirational and a powerful book. So I'm gonna keep that one. This one is All We Have Left by Wendy Mills and this is based around um, the 9-11 attacks. Um, and it, it comes from two different perspectives. Again, I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. I'm not sure if I will read that again. I might uh, read it around, obviously we're in September now. Um, I'm not quite sure when this video goes up, but um, we're around the time of 9-11, so it's quite a topical book to read. Um, so I may hang on to that actually and try and get to reading that around um, the 11th of this month. We then have Annexed by Sharon Dodger, or Dogger. Um, again, another book I'd like to reread. This is from um, Peter Van Pell's point of view, who was um, the boy that was um, part of the family that was with the Anne Frank family um, in the Annex, and that is from his point of view. I do believe this has been made into some sort of film or, or documentary, something like that. Um, 
again another book that I really enjoyed when I first read it and I would like to reread it again. So I'm just putting my books on these shelves just to sort of get them out of the way and then I will probably go in and uh, re-jiggle them and reorganise them. We then have Alice's uh, Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. This is a beautiful copy um, and is one that even though I don't plan on reading it anytime soon, it's one that I would like to keep to read to my children. It's just a, a very beautiful edition with pink pages on the side, so keeping that one. Again, moving on to books I'm not reading anytime soon are these ones. These are some of my kid books, from, ones from my childhood. So we have the Harry Horse four books, which are ones that I really enjoyed when I was younger and would love to pass down uh, to my kids. Um, and then they can decide what they want to do with them. And the other two are Jeremy Strong books, and these are actually um, illustrated and, and autographed, um, is what I meant to say, by the author himself, because he came into our school. So literally I've had these ones since junior school. So we are talking a good 10, 12 years or so. Yeah, probably like 12 years or so. So, Maybe more than that, I'm not sure. So again, keeping those on, um, they are going to be for a future generation. This is A Good Yarn by Debbie Mackema. I'm still sort of um, reading through this series. Um, it's based um, around a small village um, and it's got different perspectives of the people that live in the village and it's all centered around this woman that has a uh, wool shop. Um, so I do like this book and this series. So at least until I know that I've read most of the series, I'm gonna keep this for now. We then have the two books by Marie Kondo. I need to reread these again. I know it's sort of a bit of a backwards way of doing it, doing all my sorting out and decluttering and then reading the books, but um, I haven't had time really lately to read these. So yeah, something again that I would want to read. The Spark Joy one is the illustrator copy. Um, I probably don't need both to be honest, but they do go over different things. I believe I did mention these in a video at some point as to why I was keeping both. Um, so for now I will keep them. We then have a very small, slightly worst wear copy of 10 Things I Hate About You. This is my favourite film, um, one of them at least, and um, this is um, obviously the book that is based on um, The Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. And uh, yeah, so this is just the book copy of the actual film, so definitely holding on to that. We then have The Light Between Oceans, which again is a book that I really loved. It's very heartwarming and touching. Um, I believe I got this actually when we came back from Mexico on our first trip in 2016. Um, I really like this. It is a film as well. Have I seen the film? I can't remember if I've actually watched the film or we just watched the trailer for it. So. Um, but a book that I would like to reread in the future. We then have Happy by Fern Cotton, and um, this is sort of like one of those self-help books. I have written in it, and um, I think this is a book that you can go back to sort of time and time again, um, and will be nice to go through if I'm having sort of a, a downtime or I, I want to feel more mindful. Um, I'm always sort of trying to work on my mental health, so we'll keep that one. And then again we've got another book by Debbie Mackema. Um, this is The Shop on Blossom Street. I believe this is possibly the first book. Um, but I've got another one of hers in my To Be Read pile to pick up. And have Henry the Queen's Corgi by George Crawley. I think I'm going to pass this on. As cute as it was to read, um, I don't think I'm going to reread this again. And um, yeah, it's just about a corgi that ends up being mistaken for a royal corgi, so I'm going to pass that one on. We then have Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers, again a lovely little edition, another book that I can keep for our future children, because I am heavily going to be trying to get them into reading, there is no doubt about that. Um, Darren isn't much of a reader, so it's definitely going to be on me to influence them and get them into reading. Um, he said that to me, it was like, you'll be the one that gets them into books, so... Uh, I will keep that one. So this book is The Missing by C.L. Taylor. It is a pretty beat up copy that I got when we were on holiday. Um, I was just trying to read the back of this and see if it sort of sparked any sort of like memories in my mind of what it was about, but it really doesn't feel like this was slightly underwhelming than I thought it was the ending. 
So I'm going to pass that one on. So I've got this series. This is Across the Universe by Beth Revis. I have not read this in years. I would like to reread it again, see if I can reread it, um, if I get interested in to rereading it. And if not, then I will just put those in my um, to pass along pile. Um, that's what I did with the City of Bones series by Cassandra Clare. I started to try and read the first book and instantly knew it wasn't happening. So I just took all three books off my shelf that I had and, and put them on the pile. Um, so I'm going to keep these for now, see if I'm interested in rereading them. Even if I just read the first one and then think, do you know what, I don't want to carry on with the other two, then that's when I know it's time to pass them on. Same thing goes with the next one, and that's the Hunger Games. We're all very aware of the Hunger Games series. The events of it, due to the films, are very much ingrained in my mind, so it's not like I'm ever going to forget what the end of the plot line is of every book. But it would be nice at some point to go through and reconnect with the characters again. Um, I'm not, I've never been a huge fan of this colourway of the series. Um, and it seems a bit silly now to buy another set. Um, so I think I will read them, see what I think of them again. And, um, and then I think it's judgement time as to passing them along. And if I don't get to reading them, then I know it is definitely time to, to give them a new home. We then come to three books, which I know I'm keeping. These are all sort of biography based. So we have uh, Spaceman by Mike Massimino. We have Ask an Astronaut by Tim Peake. And then we also have my signed copy of A New Model by Ashley Graham. All three people that I really aspire um, and definitely going to keep those. We have The Snow Chart by you and Ivy is that? I'm not quite sure. This is a lovely book. I've read it a couple of times. It's definitely one of my favourite books, um, especially to read in like the winter. It's a great sort of cosy read and um, I just find it a very lovely book to read. And have The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. I read this again not too long ago. Um, I don't know if I want to reread it again. It's Obviously it's one of the most famous books that is written around the Holocaust and it's um, it's not fictional in the sense of the events happen, but it's it's um, written fictionally, if you catch my drift. Um, again, this may be one that I read once more and then decide to let it go. Um, I'm not sure. So that's going in the maybe pile. We have Pascal, or not Pascal, Rascal, uh, by Sterling North, and this is about, boy, that the friends are raccoon. How could I not keep that? That's definitely going to be a book that I keep for uh, my children in the future. It's quite an old book, um, so it, it is written slightly from the past, so you can tell. Um, but the thought of someone befriending a raccoon is too cute. We then have this book, which is Elvis by the Presleys, and this is written by all the ladies of his life. So you've got Priscilla, you've got Lisa Marie, you've got one of his cousins, um, and a couple other people thrown in. And it, it just talks about um, different aspects of his life and um, their relationship with him. Um, so I'll probably keep that one for now. It's the Choice, which I got quite recently, and of course I'm keeping it because I loved it. This one is Knit Your Own Murder, a book, again, that I really enjoyed and I'm going to keep. We have this one by Stephen King. Realistically, am I going to read this again? I liked the book. Um, I liked his um, way of writing, but it's a massive book and I just don't think I'm going to want to pick that up again. I don't think I liked the ending enough to want to pick it up again. Um, it is an eight part television event, so I might go look out for that, but that is going in the maybe pile. Then have Thrive by Arianna Huffington. Again, another um, motivational type book, um, so I think I'll keep that as well for now. We have The Diary of Anne Frank. This is just a classic. Um, I may in the future get a different copy just because this one is pretty beaten up. It's one that I've had since I was in school and I remember taking it in my book bag and that's where it's just got pretty grim um, so I'd like to get another copy maybe in the future um, but you know it's a classic um, and it's one that every time you read it 
doesn't get any less powerful so we'll be keeping that we then also have Anne Frank Remembered this is by Meep Geese who was one of the people that helped to hide the family um, again I think I want to reread this and then probably pass it on after that um, so that's that one okay so these three books we have Charlie St Cloud I've read this a number of times it's quite a beautiful story really um, and I've enjoyed it both times that I've read it I'm not sure if I want to keep that so I'll put it in the maybe pile we then have Love Lucy which is Lucille Ball's autobiography so I'll be keeping that one obviously we have Unclutter Your Mind 500 Ways to Focus on What's Important this is one that sort of needs to be out that you can just flick to um, I may put this sort of on our coffee table downstairs just to sort of flick to um, when I reorganise these I'm going to put like all the self help type books in one category so I can get to them easily we have Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty um, I don't know if I want to keep this one um, I read it once um, I'm not sure I've got a couple more of her books I believe somewhere well I've got Big Little Lies which is you know the classic I think I will because it, it's one that I will probably reread again and then pass on. Um, I've read quite a few of her books and um, so far that one's probably still my favourite. Um, I'm not sure, again going in the maybe pile and I'm going to keep Big Little Lies. Not doing very well here are we, we've only gotten rid of three books. Okay, Jaws, obviously keeping, love the film. Do I love the book though? I do like the book. I don't know, something about Jaws, like sharks terrify me, but something about Jaws I love. We have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Um, again, a book that I read and I enjoyed. Do I want to read it again? Not sure that I do, because I remember the ending of it quite well, so again, a maybe. We're going through this maybe pile quite a bit in the end. Uh, this is a Christmas one, this is Skipping Christmas, which is basically Christmas with the Cranks. Um, so we'll keep that one, good to read around Christmas, although I didn't read it last year. We then have P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Hearn. Again, it's another one of my favourite films um, and the book is very cute to read as well, especially if you're going on a trip maybe to Ireland or even just um, a trip away. It's sweet, it's very heartwarming and sad at the same time. We then have these two by Kate Morton and these are hard for me to decide on because they're big ass books and I remember enjoying them and I love the, the spines of them, I think they're really pretty. Um, I would quite like to finish the collection and then have them all sat out like that, I think that would be really really nice. Um, so I am going to keep those because I'd like to get some more of her books. Um, and. I can't remember what they're about so clearly I can read them one day. We then have A Simple Favour by Darcy Bell. Um, this one was a bit creepy and I feel like I saw, oh sorry I'm just grabbing my drink, um, I feel like I saw that there was a film coming out of this. I don't know, something about it, I don't know if I'm going to want to reread it again. It's a good thing that I've got Goodreads and that I log these because sometimes I'll pick up a book and then realise that I've already actually read it. Um, so yes, especially if it's a different cover to the one that I've read. Again, going in the maybe pile. This book again is going in the maybe pile. This is Clean by Gina Dawson and it's about a sort of teenager that ends up going into a drug rehab. Um, I enjoyed it, but I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna read it again. So that's what I need to get to thinking in a minute. So I'm sort of trying to get through the majority of the books and now I can focus on the books that I'm sort of umming and ahhing over. Right. And the next one is Things a Bright Girl Can Do. This is by Sally Nichols. I'm not quite sure if I want to keep this. Um, I liked it. It was about um, the suffragettes and had uh, various different um, point of views about the suffragettes and the suffragists and um, different girls talking about it. It's just one of those books where I think will I reread it so again going in the maybe pile. It's very hot in here. 
Probably doesn't help that I'm having a hot drink either. We then have this series, which is The Selection by Kira Cass. Now, let me just try and hold up all the books for you. This is all of the books that I have from the series. So you've got the main ones, you've got a novella and some other one. I like this series, but I don't know how much more it can go on for. I'm going to have a look on Goodreads, see if they're planning on bringing any more books out. Um, basically, if you don't know what the selection is, it is about a girl who puts in her name into this um, sort of countrywide competition um, to be the next princess and marry the prince. Um, like 12 or 15 girls end up getting picked from different counties um, and they range from, you know, top of the, the hierarchy to right at the bottom. And um, they all try and win the heart of the prince and um, it just follows this girl throughout her journey. Um, let's see, I did enjoy these books, don't get me wrong, but I think maybe it's time to let them go now. Um, I've kept them for a while and I think, let's see if she's bringing any more out. I don't think, can't see myself wanting to reread this whole series again, to be honest. Oh, this is a hard one because I, I like this series. But I don't know. I mean, definitely like the novellas and things I can think I can probably get rid of. Um, oh, I'm so torn. I'm gonna. I'm just going to put those aside for a minute. Because the other series I've got to think about is this one. And this is Wither, um, which is the Chemical Garden trilogy. I remember really liking the first one. But I think as they went on, I didn't like them as much. Um, especially the last book. It wasn't as great. And these are like hefty books. Um, so I'm going to let these go, I really enjoyed them. Um, again, it's about um, like three girls that are sort of kidnapped and taken in and they're trying to um, get this guy, have this guy's baby and um, sort of give him an heir. So um, a good sort of dystopian fantasy type series, um, but time to move on. Oh, okay. Okay, we have Bloom by Estée Lalonde. Um, I really like this book. It's quite a, a hardback book. Um, I just flipped to a page and there was Aslan. And if you follow her, you know, they are no longer together. Um, again, it's a book that I'd quite like to keep because she is one of those um, beauty vloggers and bloggers that I do follow and um, I do quite like her taste and style and things like that. So I'm going to keep that one. We have this Titanic book, which has been signed, um, which is pretty cool. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be rereading it. That's the only thing, um, but it's got my name fully in it. Um, if it was just like my first name, then I would probably be more willing to pass it on. But I think for now I'll keep it. You know, there may come a time where I wanna reread it again. Um, or someone I know might take an interest in it and I can pass it on to them. And then we have After Auschwitz by Eva Schloss and this is the stepsister of Anne Frank. So again, a book that I think I'd like to reread and then uh, maybe let go after that. The next book is actually my mum's book. Um, she won't want this back, hence why she gave it to me. And this is Dare to Dream by Izzy Judd. And this is all about her journey through IVF um, to have her daughter Lola. They actually ended up after Lola having their baby boy Kit naturally. Um, and this just goes through her struggles and um, obviously Izzy is married to Harry Judd from McFly. Um, we both read this book and um, I'm actually an IVF baby so it was interesting to see sort of what my parents had to go through through Izzy's words. Um, I was thinking about keeping this um, just for if like when I'm pregnant one day and if we are struggling but I think you know that's going to be a while and I'm not going to reread this anytime soon so um, I think I will pass that on. And I like to think that someone else is going to benefit in the meantime from these books rather than me holding on to them. The next one is Staying Strong by Demi Lovato. Um, this is 
one where you um, read one page a day. Um, I did do this one year, but I don't think I'll, I'll do it again. Um, and it's very hard to relate to her because she's always bringing out things like this. And I know I can't walk in her shoes. I don't know what she's going through, but it's very hard when she brings out things like this to then know that she's gone and relapsed and, and um, like what's in this book is not the answer. So um, I, it had its time. I did read it and enjoyed it, but I'm going to pass this one on. We then have two uh, books. Um, this is Diary of a Mad Diva by Joan Collins, and then we have The Book of Joan by her daughter Melissa Rivers. I really like Joan Collins, and I like her daughter's take as well on writing this book, so we'll be keeping those. The next book is The Teen's Guide to World Domination um, by Josh Shipp. Um, there was a time back in my teens where I really like Josh Shipp and what he stood for. I'm not a teenager anymore and I don't think I'm going to keep this for my future teenager because it's going to be at least another decade or so, um, well like at least two decades before they're a teenager and you know you don't need a book really to teach them values of life and things like that and um, if they do need a book like this and maybe they can go and pick it out themselves so we'll pass that one on. The other one I've got is Jump Ship by Josh Ship and this is more adult uh, focus. Um, ditch your dead end job and turn your passion into a profession. Um, I think I'm gonna pass this one on as well. Um, yeah, I just, I feel it would like be great for my husband, um, but he doesn't read, so we're going to pass that one on. And it's not that he doesn't read, he, he can read, it's just that he doesn't like to read because he's dyslexic, um, so he'd much rather listen to an audio book. Um, so yeah, I'm going to pass that one on as well. We then have these two books, which are um, Desi Lu, and then we have a book by Desi Arnaz. Uh, another two books that I'm definitely keeping in my collection. The next four books are another series which I do think I'd, I'd like to keep, um, like the Hunger Games series, and this is Divergent. This was another one of sort of the OG um, book series that really got me back into rereading, um, and I think I'd like to maybe read these again and then probably pass them on. Some of these are signed editions, so I'd quite like to, you know, get at least some of my money back for those ones. Um, so we shall see. I don't know, am I going to reread these again? I know what it's about. There's obviously the films. Um, okay, I'm going to put that with the other series and see what I think. We then have a lot of Agatha Christie books, and I am going to keep these. I love my Agatha Christie series. I like to have them all lined up, and um, just seeing them all like that just makes me happy. Uh, so for now, I'm going to keep them, even if some of them aren't my favourite. If you are wondering, and then there were none, is definitely my favourite. And if I had to get rid of all my Agatha Christie books, this one would definitely stay. But um, these are ones that I can reread. Um, because I've forgotten the plot of most of them already. Then have this series, which this isn't even all the books. I've got four more books sat there, but I'm not going to hold them all up. Um, which are the Kingdom Keeper series by Ridley Pearson. Um, they're all Disney-based books and Disney-surrounded. Um, I really like these. Um, I finished the whole of the Kingdom Keeper series and now on um, the Return Disneyland's series. Um, I've only got book one of that so far, but I'd like to keep these at least until I finish this series and um, they're just nice if you want books to read around Disney. They're good to take with you to Disney. Um, if you're having sad times that you've come back from Disney, these are good books to read. We then have I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. Uh, let's see what this is about. I think I'm going to pass this one on because the ending left me slightly confused. We then have The Lovely Bones. Again, it was a, a good book. I read it on holiday, but one that I'm going to pass on. This is Copycat, and this is about someone that um, sets up a profile as someone else, and it follows the lady feeling like she's being watched and um, stalked by this person. Um, so I think I will keep that one out because that's quite good. 
Ooh. We have The Hypnotist Love Story. Again, I quite enjoyed this book. I've read it quite recently, but I'm not sure whether I want to keep it, so that's going in the maybe pile. We have Lies by TM Logan. Again, a book that I've read quite recently. Um, let's see what I gave these for ratings because I have read them quite recently. So I gave it four stars. I'm trying to remember sort of towards the end of it how it finished. I'm going to put it in the maybe. This one I think I'm going to um, pass along. It's another book by Cecilia O'Han. It's the book of tomorrow. Um, and this is by Tamara Goodwin. What? And this book I think I'm also going to pass along. This is The Book of Tomorrow by Cecilia O'Hearn. Um, it's quite different to her other books, um, but one that I don't think I'm going to reread again, so I will pass that along. Is that along? So that's all of the books that I've got firstly to go through. So I'm just going to pile them up, make it a bit neater in here. Have a mini break because it is very warm in here. Um, get myself a cold drink and then um, I will probably go through those books off camera um, just for time purposes of my maybe pile and then come back and tell you what I've kept and what I haven't. So these are the books from my maybe pile that I decided to keep. So we've got The Book Thief, Things a Bright Girl Can Do, The Orphan's Tale, a Simple Favour, Clean, Truly Madly Guilty, Charlie St. Cloud and the Divergent series. Obviously if I end up picking these up at any point and I don't feel I can finish them then I will pass them on. As far as what I decided to get rid of, I did end up getting rid of the Selection series. Um, I got rid of Lies, The Memory Book, uh, the Stephen King book, The Girl on the Train, The Hypnotist Love Story, uh, Me Before You, The Book of Tomorrow, The Missing. Um, so yeah, pretty pleased with that and as you can see that is the books at the back from my last one. And you can see the City of Bones series that I also got rid of um, quite recently. What I'm actually going to do is a couple of these I'm going to take to work and put on our um, sort of like donation rail. So if you don't know, I work in a hospital and um, we have a sort of charity section where you can buy books, puzzles, things like that um, for like 50p a pound. Um, it just goes towards um, the the unit and helping and all sorts like that. So um, And there's always a long wait in our unit, so um, books are much needed and if you can find a book that you like. So I think I'm going to take some of these and um, just drop them off at um, our little book trolley because um, books are constantly on and off that shelf like flying through. So I'm going to take a few of those I think and I think they'll be well appreciated. So now I'm going to work on putting all these books back on my shelf, seeing what I'm left with and see maybe if I can take out a couple more, I don't know. Um, So I will show you the final layout of the bookshelf. So, up there I've got my Agatha Christie, I've got my sort of kids books uh, for the future, uh, the Kingdom Keepers and then some hardbacks and then coming down just sort of assortment of books. These ones are all sort of sort of mental books and then these two I just thought look pretty with them. I've got sort of all my hardback sort of autobiographies um, and then we've just got some more books and then my hardback books but yeah it's a lot more organised now everything fits nicely there is a little bit of room for growth um, and obviously down there is all my books that I've got to read so yeah and that's my pile of things I did get rid of that Ask Elizabeth book as well um, 
because again it's aimed at teenagers and I am no longer a teenager so yes that is I think my complete book overview I did take a couple things off the shelf I just left my little Bruges um, piece of lace and then my Nan's Mickey Mouse clock up there. I took my Polaroid in that photo frame off because I felt like it hid the books too much. So I need to find another place for that. And yeah, it's very warm in this room. So I hope you enjoyed this video and coming along with me. I hope this inspired you to sort through your books and see what you want to keep and what you don't. Um, so yeah, obviously probably until the next one I will be getting rid of some of these books anyway. Um, just as I read them and uh, if I reread them. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.